So once in a while you want a parameter in the controller that affects a whole lot of buttons. Examples would be camera selection. You want a row of buttons that selects the camera in the system and that camera selection affects the joystick, all the knobs for adjusting values. On a switch or surface like the LifeFly, you want such a parameter for choosing the ME row. This is a 1ME switcher, so we don't have any ME row to switch to, but luckily on our network we have a 2ME switcher. So what we'll do is introduce the button U2 to select ME row 2 on our 2ME switcher. And that should affect all these buttons, those nine input rows, the fader, cut, auto, fade to black, potentially some of these up here. Not the DSK, the DSK is global for an ATEM switcher, but in some cases the um, uh, upstream key uh, d depends on it, and definitely audio, no, well, not audio parameters. So maybe it's uh, the uh, transition types. Yeah, the transition types will also pick up which ME row we are selecting. Now, um, let's get into it. We have uh, the button U2 selected in the configuration interface, and here we now add a system action called memory. So the memory system action has a number of um, variables we can change. So essentially we're changing a variable in the controller and we'll change variable number A. And we'll set it to the value one, we'll choose toggle. So as we are cons uh, repeatedly pressing the button, it's gonna flip between the value one and the value zero. So how do I know it's the value zero it's gonna fall back to? I know that because this is written in the manual. We decided that for a parameter like memory, uh, selection, shift states, uh, shifts and states, we want it to fall back to zero because that was the, the most typical use case you needed. So that's true for toggle and for hold down, those two options will always fall back to a zero in these cases. We have a parameter called persist and persist means that it will save the value uh, in memory. So when it, it boots up next time, it's uh, gonna stay on the value that it had last time. And then finally label, we'll get into that in the next video. So I will not touch on that in this case. Because you have already watched the video about states, uh, let's just summarize that we have three states in the controller. We have macro and audio and the normal state. But since we place an action only in the normal state, it means that it's gonna be true for the macro and the audio state as well. They are without, you cannot see it here, but it will be inherited in those states. So I'm gonna save this and we'll now see this button is uh, not highlighted, but when I press it, obviously I'm putting the value memory A into the, uh, uh, the value one into memory A, and I'm now pressing it again, so it's falling back to zero. So far, so good. I'm not super happy about the label, but we're gonna address that in the next video. I now wanna apply this value, and um, I wanna apply it in all the actions we have that requires it. So let's first look at the bus rows here. So uh, for those, you'll see that we have an ME parameter and we can select memory A. Now, there's no guarantee that memory A can be selected for any parameter. So this is something that depends on how we implemented it. We decided that giving you the option of memory A here is okay. What it means is that if you're combining this on a panel that uses memory A for camera selection, you should probably move camera selection to memory B and uh, let memory A decide the ME row. So, um, in order for those not to clash, of course, because you need to keep track of which memories you're using for what. And now I'm just quickly browsing through all these actions, changing memory A in each case, where it applies. So it's not too bad. And I think that concludes it. Well, it does so for that we want to do it for these four as well. There we have memory, oh, memory A, memory A, memory A, and memory A. And let's move on to, uh, we thought about that the transition types might also want to have memory A set for the ME selection, save. Now, the only thing we need to do, uh, because let me just see, now we have this, uh, and as I'm pressing this button, you can see that they actually become inactive because it turns out that the controller very well knows that it, this doesn't have an ME, row t uh, ME2 row, so they become inactive, and um, uh, that's great, of course, but 
we do have an ME2 switch on the network, which is on this IP address. So I'm just gonna change that quickly, save. Oh, I could have pressed save and reboot, of course. So, okay, save and reboot. The controller is gonna reboot and connect to a 2ME switch on my network. While it's doing so, let me just bring up the ATEM software control. And the ATEM software control here is already connected to my 2ME Production Studio 4K switch on the network. So I, I can change between ME effect row 1 and 2. Um, the controller seems to already be booted. That's, uh, no, is that true or is it not true? Uh, let me see, it is true, that's so great. Yeah, so you can see that I am now working on this switcher, selecting stuff on mix effect row uh, one, let me cut. Yes, that's ME row one. Uh, I can do an auto, I can do the fade transitions. Can I select also the transition style? I can, that's awesome. And um, what is now interesting is what happens if I enable uh, access to ME row two. So obviously I'm changing something, but nothing is happening here because it's all going on on the mix effect row two. You see, I'm changing input source. I am cutting on this row, I'm doing an auto, I'm doing the fader transition, I'm selecting my transition style on um, the second ME row on that ATEM switcher. So there you go, this is an introduction to memories. It's also used for camera selection, which I will cover in a later video where we get a little more in depth into the complexities of this. But basically memories is like a variable which you can use in certain actions. So one key, like in this case U2, changes the ME row that affects a whole lot of other buttons in the interface. Um, as I also put on the background graphic, uh, it, it is also seen quite often in router out, um, output selection. So if you use some of our products that work with uh, ADA Kumo or the ProBell um, protocol video hub from Blackmagic Design, then quite often the, the output that a given input is routed to would be selected by a memory. So you would have a separate set of keys selecting outputs and a separate set of keys selecting the inputs that you want to route to those outputs and so forth. Yeah.